All right, well, we're going to uh, look at Exodus 15, verses 22 to 27 today, and this is the bitter waters made sweet. Then Moses made Israel set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days into the wilderness and found the water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. Therefore, it was named Marah. And the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a log and threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statute and a rule, and there he tested them, saying, If you diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right in his eyes, and give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord your healer. Then they came to Elim, where they there were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees, and they encamped there by the water. So let's look at this first verse. Then Moses made Israel set out of the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days into the wilderness with no water. So Moses' name means drawn out, and he is a typological picture of Christ. And the one who drew out is drawing them out of the Red Sea. They just went through the Red Sea. Uh, Moses is a picture of Christ who pulls us out of our sin. Moses pulled the Israelites out of Egypt. Now they went through the Red Sea, symbolic of a baptism. And now they are headed to the wilderness. Uh, and this is a picture of when we are trusting in Christ. Uh, we end up going into uh, the wilderness as a test, if you will, uh, to see how we're going to hold up. Now, the Israelites spent 40 years in the wilderness and Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness as a uh, typological fulfillment. In Matthew 4, 1 through 4, it says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man should not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And this is what we have to rely on when we are in the wilderness, when we are uh, being tested and tried. We need to rely on the Word of God, okay? Only the Word of God will get you through. And we need to be careful of the way Satan wants to twist Scripture. That's what he did with Jesus. That's what he did with the... Uh, uh, in the Garden of Eden, uh, he twisted scripture. It sounded good, but it wasn't quite right. And I also believe that this is a typological picture of the wilderness that we are currently in before we get to the final millennial day. Second uh, Peter 3, 8 and 9 says, But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that the Lord, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. So I want us to just keep that in mind as we're viewing this. It's kind of a picture of the Israelites being in the wilderness 40 years and Jesus being in the wilderness 40 days. And here we've been in the wilderness uh, waiting for that final millennium when we cross over uh, into his kingdom, his uh, uh, final kingdom. And uh, we have been in the wilderness 40 jubilees. So there's a pattern going on here that uh, I just want us to be aware of. Okay. This word sure uh, means wall. And it is also used in scripture as etham. And it means fortress, eternal, long living, or beyond the horizon. Okay. So as they come to sure, uh, which means wall, I, and Etham, which is, uh, I believe is connected to, means eternal or beyond the horizon. It appears to be 
showing you that this is a picture of coming to eternity, okay? Three days, anytime you see three days in scripture, this always points to the resurrection. This always, uh, every time I see three days in scripture, you want to have that understanding to try to understand what's going on in the story. Three days, look at the crawl, look at the resurrection, okay? This is where life began. Uh, when Jesus rose out of the grave, we now can have eternal life through him by uh, trusting and having faith in what he has already done. He is risen. And when they went three days, they found no water in the wilderness. Well, they're looking for water. And the water comes out of the earth. And Jesus is the living water that people had to wait three days for, for his resurrection when he come up out of the earth. So this one verse uh, brings this mindset into play here. And it's a spiritual understanding. <clears throat> and in verse 23, it says, When they came to Mara, they could not drink the water of Mara because it was bitter. Therefore, it was named Mara. A little redundant with the words there, isn't it? Now, I think it's interesting that in the book of Ruth, verses uh, 1, uh, 19 through 20, it says, So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole house was stirred because of them. And the woman said, Is this Naomi? And she said to them, Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for Almighty has dealt with me with very bitterly. So she is using this word Mara, but she leaves the word H off of it. And H always carries with it uh, God's grace. Uh, it's a revelation. It's a behold. Uh, it draws attention to it. And this is the letter that was put into Abraham and Sarah's name when uh, he, they come under covenant with God. I think it's also interesting here that you've got three words, Mara, in this verse. And I'm getting a little ahead of the story here, but we see three nails in the cross uh, that uh, is bitter, is not pleasant. Uh, so just keep that in mind as we go through this story because this is really what it's pointing to, is pointing us to the cross. And I think you can see that with the third day. I think you can see that with the word bitter. And we're going to expand on this a little bit more. Okay, verses 24, 25. And the people grumbled against Moses saying, what shall we drink? And he cried to the Lord and the Lord showed him a log and he threw it into the water and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statute and a rule and there he tested them. So here we see they're coming up on the edge of the wilderness here. They're being tested. Uh, 40 is a time of testing. That's what that number means. Now, this word log is et, and it means tree. It doesn't mean log. It means tree. And the first time that we see this word used is in the Bible in the garden. So in the garden, there were two trees, and one tree was the tree of life, and one tree was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the tree of life is the one that they should have been eating from, uh, but they should not have been taking from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And when they did that, they sinned and were cast out of the garden. This tree was cut down and it was thrown into the water. And when that happened, the bitter waters became sweet and pleasant. And this is how Jesus starts his ministry. In uh, John 4, 13, 14, he says, Jesus said to her, now this is the woman at the well. Uh, I'm not gonna read the whole story here, everybody knows it. But in 13 and 14, he said, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So you see the connections here. This water became sweet after the tree was cut down and thrown into the 
uh, water. Trees uh, in the Bible are representative of people. Uh, we also see that they are nations. You know, Israel is reflected in the olive tree. Uh, it's also reflected in the fig tree. Um, and you have Psalms 1, 1 to 3, that says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water, and it's that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. So people are like trees, and the upright trees are the palm trees. They are straight, they are strong, they are the ones that are deemed as righteous. And we see this in the word Tamar, Tamar. Remember uh, 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 Judah and Tamar, uh, the story, and she, he said that she is more righteous than I. That's what her word that's what her word means. It means uh, palm tree, upright. And these are more specifically the date palms. Uh, when you go down to Jericho, they have a lot of date palms. And they produce honey. Uh, the insides of them are really sweet. And they can get uh, what they call honey from them. It's uh, kind of like a syrup. And... <clears throat> the rabbis would take the honey and they would let the kids eat the honey when they are teaching them God's word so that they would remember that it's a sweet. And I believe that this is connected to the idiom, I believe is an idiom when it says that John the Baptist uh, uh, ate locusts and honey when he was in the wilderness. I believe that's what this is picturing. It, locusts Whenever you see them in the scripture, always represent judgment. And John came preaching judgment and repentance. And he lived on the word of God, which I believe is symbolic of honey. So right now, it's kind of what I think uh, is going on there with the John the Baptist thing with the uh, uh, locusts and honey. Whether that's accurate or not, I don't know. So just take that for what it is. And when Jesus cursed the fig tree, this was a symbolic picture of Israel who was not producing fruit. Uh, God withered it. And uh, it's a picture of uh, when the temple was destroyed. Uh, that kingdom is uh, been cut down, if you will. Jesus is the new kingdom, <clears throat> okay? In verse 26, saying, If you will diligently listen to the voice of your Lord your God and do that which is right in his eyes and give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord your healer. Then they came to Elim, where there were 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees, and they encamped there by the water. So notice that it says that I am the Lord who heals. And we can go to Isaiah 53, uh, verse 5, where it says that by his stripes we were healed. And when were we healed? When he was cut off. In Daniel 9, 25 and 26, we have the 69 weeks of Messiah uh, when he will be cut off on the 69th week. And that's exactly what happened. He was cut off. Uh, and when he was cut off, he actually was buried and on the third day he rose and he brought us healing. He brought us healing from our sin. And Elim is trees. And like I said earlier, that these are more than likely the palm trees, date palms, and the honey is the word devash. I also want to throw in another uh, picture here of when, uh, Joshua was crossing over from Acacia Grove, crossed the Jordan River, and came over into Jericho. Jericho is known for these uh, palm trees, date palms. And Acacia Grove, the acacia trees have thorns on them like locusts. So I believe there's a symbolic picture here of Yeshua taking us from our uh, desert 
environment that we now live in because of the fall in the garden that we now have to live in thorns and Jesus brought us over into the promised land uh, where there is righteousness and the righteous trees of uh, Tamar are here the palm trees so that's what I believe is, is picturing there now when we go to Exodus 15 verses 27 you have 12 wells and 70 palm trees well, what do these represent? Well, the 12 wells should be providing water, not only for the trees, but for the animals and whoever comes by and draws uh, from these wells. And then you have 70 palm trees that produce fruit. So what is 12 uh, number of in the Bible? What is the picture that 12 typically represents in the Bible? Well, it's governmental perfection of God's power and authority. And we have the 12 tribes that represent this. We've got the 12 apostles. And what does the word, the number 70 mean in the Bible? Well, it means completion, it means fullness, and it means nations, like 70 nations. That's what was believed to have been uh, in the world at that time, 70 nations. So that's what 70 represents. So do we see a connection with these numbers 12 and 70 in the New Testament? Well, yes, we do. Uh, after he heals the story in the New Testament in uh, Matthew 9, he has a bunch of healings there and he restores the girl back to life. He resurrects her, if you will. In Matthew 10, 1, it says, And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over clean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and affliction. So if there's another like story in it in Luke 9, 1 to 2, and it says, And he called the twelve together and he gave them power and authority over all the demons and to cure diseases and sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. So he gave the 12 disciples the authority to heal and he sent them out spreading the gospel, if you will, telling people about Jesus. So who were the ones that really healed? The 12 disciples? No, it was God. It was, it was Jesus who was doing the healing. Okay, Jesus is the living water. And they went out to Israel to preach the gospel, if you will, and have people come to Jesus. Then in Luke 10, 1, he sent the 70 out. And now after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to come. So this is a picture of the gospel going out into the 70 nations, uh, complete fullness. The bitter waters here in this picture, uh, picture Jesus and as God's word. He is the living water. And under the law, which is God's word, uh, it's bitter. But when the righteous tree is cut off, Messiah, when he's cut off on the cross, the waters become healed and they become sweet. And now the apostles that will provide the living water, Jesus, to the 70 nations uh, are represented here. These Israelites began their journey at the well, uh, the 12 wells. Jesus began his ministry at a well also. And this is where the 12 tribes drank from. If you remember, Jacob had 12 sons and Jacob dug this well. Jesus shows up here and begins his ministry. Let me read this. In John 4, 9 to 14, it says, Jesus answered her. This is the woman at the well. And if you knew the gift of God and he that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And the woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us this well to drink from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. And Jesus said to her, 
Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never thirst again. The water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up into eternal life. So, let's go back and recap the story. <clears throat> Moses drew out Israel out of Egypt, out of sin, and got them to go through the Red Sea, uh, symbolic of baptism. Went to Shur, which is a wall, or if you use the word Etham, it's eternal, eternity. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to the water, it was bitter. Okay, this water that they did receive was uh, bitter. This then the wall is bitter. Uh, and the people grumbled, and then Moses cut down a tree. Now, I believe this was a date tree, uh, but that's left to be said. It's not specifically stated here. It's You have to imply that. And it says that the waters became sweet, okay? And he tested them. Well, this is what happens when you go into the wilderness and your trial and your testing, okay? And then he heals the waters. And then they come to Halim where there is 12 springs and 70 palms and they encamp by the water. So this is a picture of Jesus, the living water, who is made sweet after he is cut off, after he is cut down. And the cross, the tree, the wood, and the tree is thrown into the water, a picture of Jesus being cut off. And this is what brings sweetness to the living water because Jesus is the healer. And by his stripes, we are healed. So this is the picture that's going on here. And then after he heals, the 12 springs, the 12 apostles can now take the gospel, Jesus, the living water, into the world and water other trees, the 70 nations, uh, with this water. We can now access this living water. When we ask Jesus Christ to come into our lives, he gives us this water. And we should become full and overflowing and water everything around us the trees that are around us and be a living spring overflowing uh, with God's mercy, God's grace, and God's gospel uh, to bring the unsaved to Jesus. So just as Moses uh, led the bride to the foot of Mount Sinai to come into covenant with the Lord uh, as a bride, um, Jesus leads his bride uh, into covenant with him. And Moses began his ministry at a well, and Jesus began his ministry at a well for his bride. And in verse 13 of John 4, it says, Jesus said to her, this is the woman at the well, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. Whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So Jesus is this living water that this story is pointing to. And he is asking us to come and partake of him. He is asking us to drink of what he gives and he will produce life and the way you do this is you realize that you have sinned you have broken God's law but that law is bitter and it brings about judgment it's mara 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 and uh, Jesus took that punishment and that bitterness upon himself he allowed three nails to be put into his hands which is bitter, bitter, bitter. And he was cut off from the land of the living, according to Daniel 9, 25, and 26. And when that happened, after three days, he rose again, defeating death so that you may have life. 
And all you have to do is ask him to forgive you of your sins, forgive you for what you've done. Come and seek the forgiveness that he can give, and he will give you living water. He will place his spirit inside of you, and you will be a changed person. You will begin living for him. It's that easy. Just repent of your sins and ask Jesus to save you from your sins, and then seek him daily.